Hey, man, where's that buck you on me? Don't lean on me, sweetheart. What are you doing? It's Bogart, man. Don't you know Bogart? The few of you who are here, you manage to make the room look very full. <laughs> Hilbert, Jacoby, Jaffe, Peggy Jaffe, here. <laughs> Seems Peggy's voice is changing. <laughs> oh, good morning. Sorry I'm late. Why? Well, Miss Brown. Hello, Mr. Dixon. Are you lost? <laughs> Don't be deceived by that laughter. According to my attendance record, there's absolutely no one here. Except, of course, Mr. Peggy Jaffe. Uh, Miss Brown, uh, there must be a mistake. Uh, this is my classroom. Oh? Well, uh, well, then that explains why there's no one here, doesn't it? <laughs> here I am. Miss Brown? Yes. Are you all right? Oh, yes, yes, of course. It's obvious. I just took the wrong turn at the water fountain. <laughs> uh, Miss Hogarth, would you put that on my desk? Please? Yes. Oh, oh, Mr. Kaufman, it's about Miss Brown. She has filed her third supply requisition this week for the same supplies. Well, if she didn't receive the supplies, she should reorder. But that's just it. She did get them. I have her signature for them here uh, somewhere. Now, wait. Uh, I put them in here yesterday. They were in... No. Um, so I, I do make... have some things to uh, do today. Just a minute. I know where. I put them in the cabinet. I knew I put them in here somewhere because... Let me know. It's strange to me that she would put in three requisitions in one... Good morning, Mr. Dixon. Lovely day, isn't it? Yes, it is. Aside from the fact that I had a flat tire this morning. Oh, there's a lot of that going around. <laughs> you know, my class really enjoyed that little joke this morning. I'm sorry, what joke was that? When you said you took a wrong turn at the water fountain. Oh, I guess I don't understand. My first grade was entirely devoted to Julius Caesar. Et tu, Brute? Then fall, Caesar. You see, nothing like a devious plot to inspire young minds. Hello, Miss Brown. Hello, Seymour. Well, uh, I'll see you. I've got some work to do before class. <laughs> young man in a hurry. You used to say that about me. <laughs> Nonsense, Seymour. You know, you're always one of the best students I ever had. No one could recite Invictus the way you did. Thank you. You remember when I told you you were going to do big things for people? Oh, yes. Profound prophecy. You know, this is a real treat for me. I don't see very much of you anymore. Well, I get busy. I promise I'll drop in on one of your classes. When? Well, soon. First thing tomorrow? Tomorrow, let's see. Oh, okay, you always knew how to handle me. Hi. 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 Listen, have you noticed anything different about Miss Brown lately? No, not really. Like what? Well, when I walked into my first period class this morning, she was there. And when I mentioned it to her later, she didn't even remember it. Who didn't remember? Miss Brown. Oh, don't let her fool you. She remembers everything. Maybe so, but she did not remember being in my class this morning. Well, she seemed perfectly fine just a little while ago, didn't she? Listen, if I have her energy and interest at that age, I wouldn't be surprised. I had a marvelous conversation with her after you left this morning. Hey, you know, Pete, she's probably just joking with you. You know how she loves the kid. I do know how she likes the kid. But this wasn't like that. It was uh, different. Well, and now for the verdict. 
I feel as if I should say, may I have the envelope, please? <laughs> I don't believe I've ever told you children this before. But I remember when I received my first report card. I had two A's, and I was so happy I ran all the way home through this beautiful orchard. It was autumn. I remember the autumn colors. Such reds and yellows and browns. Lovely autumn colors. Lovely. Lovely autumn. Oh, that sounds beautiful, Miss Brown. Miss Brown? Oh, oh yes. Now, it's the verdict. Wow! I don't believe it. Hey, sweetheart, how bold you got on me? I don't believe it. Let me see. I huh? still don't believe it. <laughs> yes, dear. You want to discuss something with the Phyllis? Miss Brown, I, I don't understand. I, you want to see me, Miss Brown? Oh, oh, yes, Esther. I, I won't keep you but a moment. We'll have to talk later, dear. But, Miss Brown... Phyllis, please. Later. Now, uh, uh, Esther, about that report. Hello, Counselor. Why, Detective Furrow Brown? Miss Brown, I think I've been brushed off. Who is the cad? You'll have to answer to me. It was Phyllis Nichols. Dear, dear, Phyllis Nichols, poor dear. I worry about her. She's plunking my class, you know. Phyllis Nichols? Yes. No, I didn't know. When Will Shakespeare was in full swing and the old Globe Theater was packing them in, there wasn't much work for professional actors. Of course, this was all B.H. Before Hollywood. <laughs> it was the old male chauvinist routine girls. The men had to play all the parts. So in our study of the Merchant of Venice this year, I want you to remember that the original Portia played with a very deep Voice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe I've told you children this before, but I... I seem to have lost what I was going to say. I... Oh, yes. Today, we're going to have recitations. Do I hear any volunteers? Seymour Kaufman, I saw you slip in a few minutes ago, late. Second time this week, isn't it? Why don't we start with you, Seymour? Miss Brown? Please rise when you address me, Seymour. <laughs> all right, Seymour, we'd all like to hear your poem now. Miss Brown. Your poem, Invictus, by Henley, I believe. Miss Brown. Oh, come, come, Simo, we're all waiting. I'm not prepared, Miss Brown. Seymour, you spend entirely too much time on extracurricular activities. You have great potential, but you'll never get anywhere if you don't prepare your lessons. Do you hear me, Seymour? Yes, Miss Brown. 
I expect you to do big things for people someday, Seymour. Yes, Miss Brown. I told you not to leave your bike on the lawn. You never have a moment's respite, do you, Seymour? You look tired. Oh, well, it goes with the territory, Miss Brown. Is it about time you began calling me Elizabeth? After all, how many years have we known each other? Thirty. <laughs> I'd say so. <laughs> um, all right, Elizabeth. Now, what's your problem? Elizabeth. I think it's going well for you this semester. We love our work. What could be more rewarding? Yes, I'm very happy. But you're avoiding your problem. <laughs> oh. Look, let's forget about problems, shall we? I'm starved. Why don't we just have a nice, leisurely lunch? All right. <laughs> Miss Brown, is something the matter? You'll be graduating this year, dear, so you won't have the chance to take advantage of all that's being offered. Miss Brown, it's me, Alice Johnson. The new auditorium will be finished in 1955. I think it's 1955. Miss Brown, what's the matter? What's wrong? Good night, Miss Johnson. Hey, Jason, come here. I need your help. Anything wrong? <laughs> Mr. Kaufman, where were you last night? I tried to call you. Miss Johnson, even a principal's entitled to some privacy. I have to talk to you about Miss Brown. What about her? Well, last night I had to help her get home. Thank goodness Jason was there to drive. What was wrong? Well, she was sitting in her car like she was in a trance. And then when we got her home, she was sort of incoherent. And then <laughs> she was suddenly fine. Is she all right now? Well, I think so. She was fine when we left, but I'm really worried about her, Mr. Kaufman. I mean, something's definitely wrong. Mr. Kaufman, are you listening? I mean, we have to do something. I know, Alice. Oh, it was freaky. She had this old scrapbook with students from a long time ago. Her children, she called them. I couldn't wait to split. What, is she sick or what? I think she just plain old. Hey, that explains it. Explains what? My grade. Miss Brown gave me an F. That's got to be a mistake. Didn't you talk to her? I tried, but she was too busy. I wanted to think. Poor Miss Brown. And all this time, I just thought she was a little weird. And all the time, was laughing at her. Man, that just ain't right. Hey, why don't you try talking to Miss Brown again and see what she says? I don't know. Do you think it'll help? Then do no harm. Well, all right. Wait a second. Miss Brown's going to change Phyllis's grade. What's going to happen to my A? What do you think? So long, sweetheart. Yeah, so long, sweetheart. <laughs> you see your doctor? We just had lunch. What did he say? Well, from what I told him, he said it sounds like a form of senility. But she's not that old. Well, according to him, it happens. She's got all the symptoms. Disorientation, loss of memory, periods of confusion. I'm going to have to do something. Best class I ever had was English Lit with Elizabeth Brown. You know, I give this reading in her class one time. She gave me A plus five. What happens now? If it is senility, she can't just take a sabbatical. Early retirement, I guess, for her sake as well as a student. Can I come in? Oh, sure, come on in. Everything okay? Yeah. Well, how's she take it? I haven't told her yet. Holding off. I have sharpened pencils and made telephone calls. 
They've been tracked down some overdue library books. All except one. You know, what bugs me is that I can't help you. I know how much this means to you, but... You have helped, Pete. Just by listening when I needed to talk to someone. Well, can I buy you dinner? I might take you up on that. A little bit later. Right now... Well, I, I can't hold off any longer. She'll be going home. Yes? Oh, I didn't know you were busy. Well, that's okay, Miss Brown. We're finished. I'll see you later, Pete. Always in a hurry, that young man. Well, hello, Seymour. Hello, Elizabeth. Um, have a seat, please. Um, can I uh, get you something? A cup of coffee, anything? Just a friendly ear. Oh? I have something for you. My corrected grade report. Oh, well, uh, thank you. Uh, um, are, you are you comfortable there, Elizabeth? Yes. And along with that report goes an explanation. Elizabeth. You don't need to explain. Yes, I think I should. It is not necessary. Seymour, in one quick sentence, I would like to resign. Resign? Come, Seymour, we both know why I'm here. I'm sorry, Elizabeth. I think... I've been somewhat aware of what was happening, but I didn't know how to handle it because it was never quite in focus. But when it affects my students, I, I shouldn't have waited this long. Is there anything I can do? Continue to be my friend. Oh, Seymour, wipe that silly forlorn look off your face. Isn't a friend allowed to worry? No, not when there's nothing to worry about. The older one gets, the fewer choices one has. Anyway, I still have these. The travel folders? I've always wanted to travel. I've had them for some time. Of course, that presents me with the problem of having to decide between tours A, B, and C. Well, B looks pretty good. You could visit the birthplaces of some of our famous poets. You knew I'd be a pushover for that one, didn't you? And yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate how charged with punishment the scroll. I am the master of my fate. And the I am the captain of I... my soul. You remembered your Invictus. A plus five. Yes. I was a good teacher, wasn't I, Seymour? Best, Elizabeth. some intrigue here? Miss Brown, we all chipped in. We didn't know what to get, so we got this. Hope you like it. Well, man, give it to her. Oh. Hope you like it. He said that already. It is perfectly permissible to repeat oneself under certain circumstances. And the giving of gifts is one of them because the recipient may be so overcome with emotion that he or she doesn't know what they're doing. Will you all help me, please? Oh, children. You shouldn't have. We wanted to. Do you like it? I love it. I just love it. Thanks to all of you. Thanks, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs>